Good morning, welcome to the premium video forecast discussion for April 29th, 2020. Of course, it is a Wednesday morning, and we're going to start off first with the MJO guidance. I talk about this in the long range thoughts. Very interesting data is coming out. Now, I threw out the GFS because this is kind of all over the place and it doesn't have a lot of support from the other model guidance. It's basically running up towards uh, phase six, seven, and eight up here and uh, almost all the other guidance is basically right around here so the GFS for whatever reason is having issues so we're just going to put that aside but the European and the European ensemble guidance UK met all the other but pretty much in the same clustered area now up through the regular time period uh, the shorter range guidance basically goes through 8-1 uh, right around this area here through the middle of May. But the end of May goes into this very interesting neutral zone. And let me zoom in here on this. Look at this. It just kind of wraps in on itself. This is a very interesting sign because what this typically means is that we're losing support of forcing in the tropical realm. And we're also losing support of forcing in the stratospheric realm. So where is the forcing coming from? Well, it's going to be kind of like a ghost image. But it's going to be a rather chaotic type of weather pattern for the middle and end of May. Could be very interesting. A lot of volatility is on the way. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that and see how that all evolves. And interestingly enough, the uh, latest European ensemble guidance tries to bring back an east-based east-based negative nao pattern here with a nice ridge trying to push into greenland and you have these below normal heights over the eastern united states so on through the middle of may you continue on with the same type of weather pattern east based negative nao during this time of year typically supports some weaker backdoor cold fronts but nothing like what we're seeing in in much of april and uh late march so very interesting pattern is evolving here certainly not a warm weather pattern the end of may early june i think that's your uh, potential not a guarantee potential to see some warmer conditions as all of our forcing mechanisms start to relax and then where we go from there whether we go to la nina or not well that is that's the big question isn't it meanwhile we have some very interesting weather setting up for tomorrow afternoon. Now, for today, it's just pretty much just a blah type of day. You have this onshore wind, which I'm going to show in a second even better. Uh, so that this is transporting a marine type air mass ahead of this warm front here. Here's our low pressure system way back here over the upper Midwest and Central Great Lakes. I'll be heading up towards the St. Lawrence River Valley and dragging a cold front with it. Take a look at these winds. This is pretty cool, right? This is from earth.newschool uh, n-u-l-l if you want to check it out uh, very very cool stuff because what you could see here at the lower levels of the atmosphere down towards the surface see that onshore flow now around connecticut you still have more of an influence coming in with our high pressure system from the uh, central new england areas around the mountains green white green and white uh, mountains here and that's all flowing in but for the most part for the philadelphia new york city metropolitan area clearly a push off of the Atlantic Ocean and we'll continue to see that throughout the day because of this I can't rule out some drizzle maybe an isolated shower but that is pretty much about it and you can see on the radar here again not much in the way of precipitation but I can't rule out an isolated shower no heavy downpour so just kind of a, a pest here and there you can see our more substantial rainfall back here off to our west and on our water vapor satellite picture Again, pretty cool to take a look at this. See, here's our storm organizing. And what's really interesting here, we can take a look at the water vapor satellite picture. All of these different features all working together, evolving and, and interacting. And unfortunately, it's going to produce some very nasty thunderstorms at MCS, uh, organizing over portions of eastern Texas and uh, Louisiana. Uh, and this is just going to cause a lot of problems down to the south. But for us this whole feature is going to start to merge and combine into one upper level low and that's going to keep showers lingering over the region on friday it's also going to lead to some rather nasty weather conditions on thursday night and a friday morning that is where we're going to go with the model guide so 
First of all, I'm going to break it down based on each level. So we're going to start all the way up at 300 millibars. And I'm going to jump to Thursday evening, 0Z Friday, which is about 8 p.m. on Thursday. Now, first thing I notice here is you're seeing this ridge out here in the Atlantic. Now, you might say to yourself, Stephen, who cares about a ridge out in the Atlantic? Ah, that's because it slows everything down. So this sets up an environment where we have the potential for a lot of rainfall. So here we have our divergence and diffluence all setting up here. Here's our strong jet streak here, all aligning. And that all leads to one thing and one thing only, and that is some very nasty weather conditions. Why? Because you have divergence and diffluence setting up rising motion in the atmosphere. You have your jet streak setting up to, to allow that jet streak dynamics to work with the cold front. So you might get these little spawned up little low pressure systems to enhance the precipitation along the cold front. So you have all that set up with our jet stream dynamics. More of a neutral to slightly negative bent here with the jet stream, not true negative tilt. Negative tilt, you'll see the winds coming like this, but it's moving in that direction. So you have divergence, diffluence, and a slowing down of the cold front as it's approaching. All of that combined with 500 millibar heights falling off rather steadily Thursday night into Friday morning. So your 500 millibar heights are falling. It's cooling the atmosphere, creating destabilization, enhancing the lifting. And oh, by the way, that upper level low just kind of lingers over the region on Friday. So as a result, you end up with those lingering showers and clouds all over the place as uh, for Friday. So not exactly the best way to end the week, I know. But don't worry, the weekend looks pretty good. Might as well just jump right to that. Take a look at that. Nice ridge. That's what you need. That's what you need for a nice weekend. Wonder if people are going to stay indoors. It'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. Now, 500 millibar PVA. Here's where I want you to focus on. We'll jump all the way to 2 a.m. on Friday. Now you see these little spokes here. Actually, we'll jump back even more. 8 p.m. on on Thursday. Okay, now look at these little spokes here. These little pieces of energy. Okay, You're supposed to call PVA energy for people who are trying to catch up okay so i know some of the peers are like it's not called energy trust me you want to use pva uh but if, if energy works with your mind a little bit better go with that okay so you see this line here and you see these little spokes out ahead of this area now look what happens by the time we get to 2 a.m on friday continuing to basically linger out ahead of this main area of lifting at 500 PVA. So you have all this increasing 500 millibar PVA throughout the northern mid-Atlantic out ahead of the cold front. This is going to support thunderstorm cells within the main area of heavy rainfall. And in those thunderstorm cells, that's where we're going to see a lot of mixing. And that's also where we're going to see a lot of the uh, potential for very heavy downpours and uh, impressive wind gusts so remember by the time we are at 2 a.m on friday look where the 500 millibar pva is okay just keep that in the back of your mind and then we rotate through the rest of friday our upper level low is basically moving right over the philadelphia new york city metropolitan area so it's going to keep very unsettled conditions in place now we're going to step down to uh, the precipital water values and i just want to make this point here for 8 p.m on thursday on through 2 a.m. on Friday, and even pushing up to 12Z which on Friday, which is 8 a.m., this type of precipital water value signature here signifies two things, very strong lifting and a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So when you combine those two features, that leads to a lot of heavy downpours and heavy rainfall, something that uh, it can be pretty impressive uh, in the uh, setup here. Now, remember what I had said at around 8 p.m. and uh, and 2 a.m. from 8 p.m. Thursday to 2 a.m. Friday. Now, this is 700 millibars. Okay, this is down lower in the atmosphere. 500 millibar PVA is back in central Pennsylvania. This is 700 millibar vertical velocity. That's rising motion in the atmosphere. So when you have this vertical velocity, think of it this way. There's 
lower pressure, okay, and, and that lower pressure, that deficit, needs a filling. So air rapidly rises to fill that void. So that is essentially what we're seeing here in this in this uh, map here, is this line of rapidly rising air. And notice it's over where we're seeing those little pieces of 500 millibar PVA, and also east of the main 500 millibar PVA. So what does that mean? That means this is our surface cold front, okay? And it's showing a tremendous amount of lifting, tremendous amount of mixing. Remember that, okay? Drop down to 850 millibars, same time period, same type of lifting, PVA. Look at it, L, ahead of the cold front. Look at that very strong lifting. Continuing again. So you're seeing rapidly rising motion from the surface on up to 700 millibars. Okay, keep that in the back of your head. Now take a look at the winds. Okay, here we have 2 p.m. on Thursday, right here over central Pennsylvania. I point that out just to show those of you listening in central Pennsylvania, you you have optimal period time period for, for instability in the atmosphere to throw in to all this. You have strong lifting and you have winds sustained anywhere between 55 to 75 knots. And that marches its way right towards the mid-Atlantic coast. Now it weakens a bit. I'm a little suspect of that in the model guidance only because of the factor that typically at night these mid-level jets at 850 millibars have the potential to intensify. And there's a lot of lifting parameters. So I would not be surprised if this doesn't weaken here. It remains intact. But the model guidance for now does show some slight weakening. But still, you still have that potential for pockets of winds up to 75 knots. Now, the reason why that's important at 850 millibars, way off the ground, is that you have all this lifting going on, right? Now, that lifting creates mixing down towards the coast. So, down towards the, uh, the surface, which impacts the coast. Okay, so, you have having all this mixing. It slams down. Boom. There's your wind gusts. And so... That all pushes off the coast, and notice it's becoming more and more negatively tilted at 850 millibars. So this type of scenario, even into Friday morning, for those of you in Long Island and Connecticut, it gets pretty nasty out there. And so I just want to also show the 850 millibar temperatures. Why? Well, I want you to consider this. In this environment, we have a little bit warmer air pushing in to help that instability. Okay, a little bit of clash here but it's not as cold as the previous systems. And, and that's really important because on Friday, when there's that potential for some mixing in the atmosphere, it's not as cold. So this is an environment where your wind gusts are primarily focused with the heavy rainfall and the thunderstorms. After this cold front leaves, winds are going to subside, and you won't see those strong wind gusts because the mixing is not as, as sane. You're still going to have a 500 millibar low overhead, which is going to create instability in the atmosphere and uh, create a, uh, a basically an environment where you have a lot of clouds and showers, but you don't have the same type of mixing environment with the winds aloft. And also the winds will be weakening as that jet streak remains off the coast. So it's not going to be the same environment. I wanted to just make that clear. So over the next 90 hours, just kind of cloudy and isolated shower drizzled for today. For tomorrow, we'll see showers increasing in coverage. Then we get that line. Here it is, lining up very nicely with all the mid-level forcing. Your 500 millibar PVA is back here. All your mid-level forcing is right here. Here's your pockets of showers and thunderstorms. And where you get the heavier rainfall will depend on where those thunderstorms set up. You're still talking anywhere from 1 to 3 inches of rain. So it's going to get pretty nasty. And that all marches away. Notice how slowly it's marching its way through, okay, because of that environment. And it even tries to support a secondary low pressure system. Not sure if I buy into that just yet as far as it being as organized, but certainly a spawned area low pressure here or there would certainly be a possibility with the type of jet street dynamics. And that all clears out. And then, again, you could see on Friday just showers just kind of rotating around the region. But then we clear out for Saturday. And Saturday and this weekend, oh boy, 
it is going to be a very very nice weekend so yeah open up the windows enjoy the uh pleasant weather conditions for this weekend yell out to your friend as you continue to stay home wear a mask whatever i'm not going to tell you what to do but i am going to tell you this this weekend is going to be absolutely beautiful so there's a little bit of good news at the end this is your premium video discussion of course i'm your meteorologist stephen d martino and as always stay safe out there